Before we begin today's video, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed and watched my videos throughout these years. It's been already two years since I first posted my first tutorial about Unreal Engine 4. And finally, last night we hit 5000 subscriber marks. So thank you very much for that. And like I promised, the download link for the Inventory and Crafting System Series project files is going to be available for free on my Discord. Link is down in the description box so you can join. Uh, it's completely free. It's available for everybody. And once you have joined, go to the updates section and you will find the download link right here and download and use it. And now on with the video. Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video we shall try to accomplish so that the our rifles and pistols would get equipped by using the use button because as of right now we can only drop those. Some of you might not be following throughout the whole series so maybe you might be missing the quick slots for example but those are kind of going to be needed. Uh, you don't have to display them but you need some of the mechanics behind them to make this thing fully function with the use button uh, because the medical boxes right now only function because in the background what we are essentially doing is once we click the use button it is adding that item to the ninth quick slot and instantly uses that item but well if you don't have these functionalities don't worry we're going to talk about this in this video so the first thing that you need is in the inventory structures uh, we have a new structure called s quick slots and this basically consists of a string and an integer so basically the string tells us where the item is located player or the backpack and the index is the index in the array uh, depending on where the item is located in now so in our ui usage what i'm essentially doing is um so first actually in the third person character you would need to have a quick slot array mine right now consists of nine elements so i have the first zero till seven are the displayed one which you can see at the bottom of the screen and then I have one extra which is not getting displayed but this is that slot which is getting used to uh, consume the item so if we would go to our UI usage and on use we are casting to the character we are getting the quick slots and then we are getting the length and we are removing one from the length to get the index because the length is nine but we have only index eight so we do minus one to receive the last index if you don't have quick slots at all, technically you could be just having a single entry, a zero one, and you can use that for quick, uh, quick uh, consumement of the items. So we are setting that arrays element to be that specific item, and then we are running our use quick slots function to consume these goods. So let's modify this function and let's talk about this. So this is a function inside of our third person character, which essentially consists of only one input, which has the slot index, which is an integer. So we promote that to a local variable so we can access that. And then we are doing a switch depending on that quick slot. So in my case, this is the ninth right now. So the index eight. And this function gets ran when I use any of my quick slots. So then we are checking where is the item located and then we store that item in the local space. So we have one, if it's a backpack item, then it's over here. If it's a player item, then it's over here. And then we uh, save that as a local item. Then make sure to get that item. Don't use these values, set that and then get the local item from your local variables. So this guy right here. And then you can get its information from the database. Then once we get the information, we do a switch depending on the type of the item. As of right now, if it's health, hunger or thirst, we are running our server add stats function, which uh, restores our health and all the other parameters that we have. But if it's armor, arm or weapon, then we are running our find empty equipment, which we are going to modify uh, so that it would work with our pistols and rifles. Then if we were successful with finding an empty equipment slot, then we are adding that item to our equipment. Then again, we are doing another switch to tell wh where is the item located in, uh, depending on our quick slots information. And then, well, we remove one item from that specific array. And then if the UI is open, then we are refreshing the inventory UI, which should have the inventory uh, position. And then we have also, if it's false, then we are just simply refreshing the HUD. So. First, what we need is we need to add some more entries to this switch. So let's add two more entries because we have two new types. We have the pistol and we have the rifle. So let's add those. Now let me bring those up a little bit. So we have the rifle, we have the pistol and both of those can go to find empty equipment because well, those are equipment pieces. So let's now go to that function, which is also in the third person character. So the input is a string, so the type of the, the weapon. Then we have two outputs. We have the local found and local index. And so what we are essentially doing here is again a switch depending on the type. So we need again two more entries because we have also the 
pistol and we have the rifle. So as of right now, the armor is in the index zero for me. You can have a look at that in your, let's see, it's in the inventory functions, add item to equipment. And here is our switch. So zero is armor, one, two is arm, uh, and three, four, five is the weapon. So the melee weapons. And for the three, I have the pistol and rifle uh, only. So that's exactly what we want to do in the find empty, uh, empty equipment as well. So on zero, we have armor. One, two is the arm. Three, four, five is the uh, melee weapons. And then let's copy one more of these. And then we can have our pistol and rifle. Let's connect the array. And this one is the index number three because the pistol and rifle can only go in the right hand and nowhere else in my case. So then we can connect that to the loop. Then we are going the, doing a loop through all the, these possibilities that we have provided. So we have one, two, three, and one possibility. And then it checks that specific index inside of our equipment to see whether that uh, slot is empty. And if it is, then it tells you, yeah, it's empty, you can equip something. But for our pistols and rifles, we need to do some more checks because if the other arm is not empty, uh, then we can't uh, equip that. So we got to make sure that the other slot is empty as well. So what I will actually do is again, I will do a quick switch on string. So string switch, this one will have only two pins. So this is going to have the rifle and pistol. Then we need a type and the type can come from the input right here. So we have that. And then let's see. So if it's a rifle or a pistol, then what we want to do is let's get our equipment. So let's get the equipment and we want to get a copy from this. So let's get a copy to the index number four. So our right hand and I want to make sure that this is empty. So I'm going to split the item. There we go. And I want to check if the name, the row name is equal to the empty item. So empty, empty item. Then let's do an if branch check and we can do that from the rifle and from the pistol. And then if that is true, if this condition is true, then we can proceed and set the value of local found to be true. And also we can do that uh, through the default route as well, because well, here we are only proceeding with the function if it's one of these types, if it's a default one, we don't do anything. If it's something else, if it doesn't match these. So essentially at once we are at this point, that means that that one specific location is empty. And then we check if it's pistol or rifle, then we check whether the index number four is empty. Otherwise, if it's something else, we just simply tell the function that, well, there is a free slot and you can use that one. So now we can compile and save this and let's give it a go. So let's pick up our items. And technically, if we would now drag and drop it on top of our character, we are able to equip this. And also if we right click and click use, we are available to actually equip these pieces. So if we already, as you can see, we since we have something, it's not even working, it doesn't allow us to use it. So everything is functioning the way it should. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, we have adjusted the functionality to the way we need it. In the future, I'm considering changing the backpack system a little bit because as of right now in the slots, we can move items one by one and everything seems to be just fine. Uh, but in the backpack, we can't select a specific slot. It just simply selects the first empty one. So we are going to adjust the drop events because some of you were asking about this. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next video.